Consider me impressed with SMU because they began the season scraping by a Nevada team who's a little better than we thought in the Mountain West, but not great. And then they were going back and forth with quarterback, and I, I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand. You had Preston Stone. He had a proven body of work. What, what do you miss? Oh, wait. Rhett Lashley knows things. He knew that Kevin Jennings, for whatever reason, is the guy. Hard to argue with that decision. SMU's been playing really good football, and they can prove themselves to be the clear-cut number three team in the ACC this week. Now, that depends on how a couple of games go. Thursday night, a big one, a huge one. You cannot overlook and undefeated in the ACC. And top 20, Pittsburgh with Eli Holstein, Pat Narduzzi and company, They've been playing really good football, looking to stay unbeaten. I'll get to that pick, but I want to start with SMU because they travel to Duke this week. They're a pretty sizable favorite. It's it, it's about 11 and a half points. I think Duke's a better team than that. Now, SMU, I have a hard time picking against SMU because you think of Kevin Jennings, you think of Rhett Lashley and the way they can throw the football all around the yard, right? Would it surprise you to know that SMU runs on average for 200 yards a game? It's actually 199.6, but... I think we can round up right there. 200 yards a game on the ground with the way Kevin Jennings is playing nine touchdowns to two interceptions since taking over for Preston Stone. I like the way SMU is playing. The transfer portal class they they brought in, everything seems to be gelling. Took a little while, but they look good. And they can prove themselves that they go to Durham. This is a big game for Duke. They only have one conference loss at the moment. The ACC doesn't have an open conference title race. I think it's Miami, Clemson, and everybody else. But the race to be number three and hope that Miami or Clemson stumbles or some craziness in college football happens and you find your way into the conference championship game, it's on the table. It's absolutely on the table. And SMU can prove that if they go on the road. I think they win the football game. I do not think they cover. I think Duke keeps this around. Malik Murphy's been playing good football. Manny Diaz has gotten things going quicker than I expected him to. I thought this might be what Duke looks like in year two. But he's just got things rolling. Duke doesn't have the toughest schedule in the world. They've played some close games. I think this will be another one. I do think SMU will have enough to win. Give me the Mustangs 38 to 31. They beat Duke. That Blue Devils defense is tough. I like the SMU offense just a little bit more. Duke's averaging less than 20 points per game allowed this year, right around 17. But that SMU offense is explosive. They are humming. I think they win, but I think that Duke covers. Another game to watch for before I again get to that Thursday night game. What is your what is your thought if I just say Virginia Tech football? What do you what do you think about right now? Do you think they're done as an ACC title contender? Could be. They're four and three. That's not any good. Oh, wait for it. They only have one conference loss. And they have played significantly better in the last couple of weeks. Their defense is averaging 14 points per game allowed over their last two. And the offense has found a rhythm to the tune of 31 and 42 points against Stanford on a cross-country road trip and against Boston College at home last week. So Virginia Tech comes back home this week to play Georgia Tech. They're about a 10-point favorite. Now, I like Georgia Tech when Haynes King is there. I think they could have hung around with Notre Dame if Haynes King had been able to play I trust Virginia Tech in this spot. I like them at home. Enter Sandman will be rocking. I think Kyron Drones is going to be able to do enough to get them over the hump. And look, Georgia Tech without Haynes King, it, it, it stinks. It stinks, and I don't know his availability right now. But either way, even if he plays, I think Virginia Tech wins this football game 31-17. Hokies over the Yellow Jackets. Now to that Thursday night game. Pitt, 6-0. and Six and O Pitt against five and one Syracuse. Speaking of teams not tech technically out of the ACC championship hunt, Syracuse is two and one in conference play. Between them and Duke and Virginia Tech, I kind of expect that one of those teams starts to push for that number three spot in the conference. I think Duke goes down. I think it's going to be Virginia Tech, but Syracuse could surprise me. Kyle McCord is throwing it all over the football field. Pitt's favored here at home. They definitely should be. They definitely should be their six-point favorite. I like Pitt to win the game. Do you see how not confident I am in that? I I'm I'm going with Pitt, but I think this is a I think this is a tight one. I think it's a really tight, competitive, and wait for it, low scoring football game. The point total is 62 and a half. That means that Vegas thinks at least one team's getting into 30. I think this is going to be one of those weird random games where neither team plays to their full offensive potential. You got a good quarterback matchup here in Eli Holstein and Kyle McCord. 
But I think that the defense is just, it's just going to be one of those kind of random off click games on that side of the ball going both ways. So give me Pitt to win 23 20. Close, close foot, football game in Pittsburgh. Louisville travels to Boston College. I love this bounce back spot. Louisville played a good football game last week. Defense couldn't get a stop, but Boston College, after the hot start, ah, they, they faded. They faded a little bit. And Tyler Shuck is playing good football. He's over 2,000 yards through the air, 18 touchdowns to three interceptions for the, I don't know, what is he, a seventh year quarterback? He sure looks like it out there. I think Louisville goes into Chestnut Hill, wins this football game 38-21. I, I like Louisville a lot in this spot after playing well, but not quite well enough against Miami last week. North Carolina goes to Virginia. You know, good for Virginia being better than people like myself thought. North Carolina, on the other hand, unfortunate that Mac Brown and company have had quarterback injuries and they're having the sort of season that, frankly, I think they would have had anyway, even if they hadn't sustained copious injuries at that spot. But Virginia's at home, favored by four. I think North Carolina squeaks this one out. This is one of those games, again, where you just, it, it, it looks one way on paper and it should be one way. I don't necessarily hate what I have seen from North Carolina quarterbacks this year, but I'll, I'll take them to find a way to go to Virginia and get the win. North Carolina 27 to 24. Wake Forest goes across the country to play Stanford. I think the Cardinal win in this spot. Now, Stanford has not been a good football team this year. Their lone ACC victory is Syracuse's lone loss. But this is a long trip to make. And when Virginia Tech made this trip, I think it was a couple weeks ago, and won, and, and won handily against Stanford, I was impressed because it's a long cross-country road trip. Yeah, you're not playing a great team. Miami wasn't playing a great team in Cal. Guess what? They struggled. They were down. They should have lost the football game, but they didn't. Stanford is in need of a win. I don't think there's huge mounting pressure in Palo Alto on Troy Taylor in year two. Stanford has quickly, with the changing landscape of college football, become one of the most difficult power forward jobs in the entire country. But I think they win in this spot. Stanford 31, Wake Forest 28. A non-conference battle for Stanford's rival up the road, that be uh, Cal, looking for their, oh, they're not getting an ACC win this week because they play Oregon State in a classic Pac-12 showdown, RIP. Now, Oregon State is thin along the defensive line, and Cal... They're trying to dig deep, and Justin Wilcox might be coaching for his job every week. There, there, there is a world in which Justin Wilcox loses his football game and goes to his post-game press conference, and that's the last one he ever does as Cal's head coach. Now, he's got an extended contract, so maybe they want to keep things going, but Cal has lost four consecutive football games. It's the same story. It is the same story for Cal under Justin Wilcox. Start hot. Regress back to the mean, probably figure it out by the end of the year. I think that starts this week against Oregon State. I will take Cal to win the football game 27-20. to Miami hosts Florida State. This was supposed to be a big game. It was supposed to be a big game, and Florida State is just awful. Some, somehow, Florida State is worse than you think. They, they are... I, 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 I'm out. Of, I'm out of words. I'm out of words to describe what Florida State is because they are one in six, and I don't think they're going to get to four wins. Allow me to read you the remaining schedule. Miami is going to thrash them this week. Then they host North Carolina. I guess they could win that game at Notre Dame. That's a loss. Host Charleston Southern. Okay, they have at least one more win on the resume. Then they host Florida. I don't think they're winning that football game. Florida is much better. This is, at best, going to be a three-win team for a preseason top 10 team. It just keeps getting worse. Miami, big. The offense is rolling, and I think that continues here. Miami, 55. Florida State, I'll give them 13 just for fun. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time, and until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.